Hey, I'm Mark Edward Lewis, and welcome to Cinema Sound. A lot of you have asked, what are the right settings, and how do we get a good AC3 Dolby N code for 5.1 or stereo? Well, uh, I figured doing a little video is probably the best way to do it. I'm going to use compressor, but any of these settings in any of your encoders are going to be the same, even if you're using Naric or whatever. These are the settings that you want to use, I promise. And it's the same, almost, for 5.1 or stereo. So check it out. I'm going to just, this is compressor, and if you've never used it, don't be confused. It'll be self-evident how it all works here in a second. I'm going to go pull up, uh, let's say, the Blade of Honor Final 7. I'm just going to drag and drop. All right, so however you get your media in, this is a video file, um, which is uh, actually, I believe this one is stereo. And then let's bring in the audio mix. We're going to go here, audio, do do do, finals. Let's use the cinema mix, which is minus 23 dB. Do do do, print master version three. Oh, that's the mix. There is, I mean, the music. There's the one we want. Great. So now we have the 5.1 master, and on the media file, we have a stereo master at minus 9. Great. So we're going to go to audio formats. If it's not, if you can't see it, you just click on this little thing here, or however you're going to instantiate an AC3 encode preset. Here's AC3. We're going to bring it onto this one, and we're going to bring it onto this one. Now I'm just going to work with the print master 5.1 for now, because really it's the same settings as what you would use for the stereo. All right, here's AC3, and we're going to go to the audio tab. Now, check this out. We want channel layout to be 5.1. Now, that may seem obvious, but it goes without saying. If you want a 5.1 output, you don't want to have it on stereo or one of these other strange formats. You want 5.1. And that sometimes may say, oh, it'll say 5.0, and then a checkbox to say add, L add low frequency effects like DVD Studio Pro used to use, which was so confusing. But yes, LFE. You want to have discrete six channels, whether that's 5.1 or 5.0 plus the LFE, however that is. We want the sample rate to be 48K, of course. We don't want the target system to be anything but DVD video, not generic audio AC3, not DVD audio. I mean, who does that? DVD video. And that's the same for Blu-ray discs. It's DVD video. I know it doesn't make any sense. If you're going to do PCM for Blu-ray, that's a completely different process, which I'm not going to cover here. All right, for 5.1, we always want our bit rate to be 448 kilobaud. We don't want to go less than that. Always 448. For stereo, we've got a lot more options available to us. Um, you can, you know, sometimes presets will default to 160, but as high as you can go, up to about 320. Above that, it really doesn't matter. And you're just wasting space. All right, so, but we are in 5.1. Here's 448. Uh, always computed, completed main. It's just a kind of a header for that. And then surround EX mode and stereo dynamics always say not indicated. That allows all of your good buddies and fans and their head units for their surround systems to figure it out for themselves what it should look like. If you, you know, if you have a lot of knowledge about LTRT or LORO, then you can choose that, but just let it figure it out for itself. Then here, you want the center to be minus three uh, and the surround to be minus three. If you've got a lot of mm, unique information in your surround channels, things that just don't exist, that are important to the story, not just, hey, I've got some cool ambiences back there, but stuff that's important to the story, then you may want to make this a uh, one and a half or, 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 or less. Uh, if it's kind of not, then my suggestion is you, you make it six. Just go with that. And then again, three, and then possibly six, depending. Again, more unique story important critical elements in the surrounds the higher you want to make this uh never infinity off obviously that just shuts them off now for the fun stuff the stuff that really most people get wrong and it's tragic but let's not get this wrong anywhere anything that says compression kill because it's going to mess with your encode it's going to add compression and limiting and a change in eq at best any of these kinds of things we don't want anything to do with. None of this. Even the DRCRF, none of it. Always off. Then we want to turn off the LFE low-pass filter. Hopefully, if you've looked at the Cinema Sound Education, you've learned how to do your own roll-off for the LFE as required by deliverables. So we don't want to add another low-pass filter. The DC filter, always off. 90-degree phase shift, 
Uh, if you've done your mix correctly, you shouldn't need to mess with the surround channels. They should sound great the way they are. You shouldn't have to fool around with them. And with the Dolby Digital Standard, a lot of people say, you know, oh, well, that helps make it more surroundy. Well, you know, with, with ProLogic and those old standards, yeah, I'd say turn that on. That, that's a good idea. But otherwise, no, don't. Now, 3 dB attenuation. You're like, well, why would you want to turn the surrounds down? Well, because we've tuned our rooms with the surrounds 3 dB loud. Yeah, it's backwards. Actually, they're 3 dB soft, which means that our levels to them are 3 dB loud. That's just the general cinema delivery. That's how you want it to be. But if you're delivering a DVD and you suspect that your fans will have a room that's tuned flat, then you may want to have the 3 dB attenuation for the surround channels on. But I never do. Now, here's the last and most important setting that you don't want to get wrong. That's the dialogue normalization. This is so backwards. What this means is that the that, that minus 27 dBFS, it means it's reducing the overall level of your program by 4 dB. Well, Mark, why 4 dB? It says minus 27. I know, because the maximum is minus 31 dB. Well, Mark, that's lower. Why is that the maximum? I know, it's weird. Maximum zero dB, it doesn't mess with your levels, is minus 31. Now, there's standards, they, they put this dialogue normalization thing in so that all CDs or DVDs and Blu-rays can have kind of a general thing. You know what I think about that. Let it, do you, let it, you, let your mix ring free on your DVD and Blu-ray. Make it minus 31 dB, uh, uh, dBFS. With this on, you should be, with this, these settings this way, uh, you should be able to create a wonderful sounding, just like what you had intended from your mix outputs, DVD AC3 or Blu-ray AC3 output. For stereo, now we look here and we go, okay, well, there's a lot more stuff that we can look at and deal with. Uh, uh, you know, we got video encoding and all these other things for a video file. But notice that this is AC3 and it's exactly the same settings. Even if we go say, oh, we want to do a ProRes output. Well, the AC3 is still going to be a separate file. Don't be confused. We never encode audio onto the video file when doing a DVD or a Blu-ray authoring. They're always separate files and separate kinds of files too, which is kind of a drag. But anyway, hopefully this helps you understand what settings to have for your AC3. If not, well, even if so, come hang out with us on the cinemasound.com forum and the blog. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're